Welcome back guys to Midnight Gaming. Today I have a deck profile that I played at the release event at Top Cup Comics uh, that's located in the Chicagoland area. They usually host uh, all the regionals and any of the events that uh, occur in the Chicagoland area. Like the, they're the main area, uh, main controller of all the Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, things that go on in this area or whatever. But anyways, they had a release event this weekend and I actually took first place with uh, this deck Altergeist Marionetter and actually only played it I think two matches the day before and I only had learned the deck an hour before that but uh, there was a good turnout for players and there was a few uh, packs per head that were given and uh, yeah so I ended up winning first place ended up getting uh, two boxes of Flames of Destruction as a prize so I'm gonna go ahead and open these up in a separate video and then I also got um, a few more packs or whatever because there was a good amount of people or whatever. And unfortunately, I opened those up at the shop just because I, I was like, oh, I'm not going to get anything from loose packs, you know? But I uh, ended up actually pulling infinite impermeance and um, some some other ultra rares. I think it was another multi-faker. And I think I got vampire sucker, so I ended up getting two more secrets from... Uh, the loose packs that were just nine of them so unfortunately I, I mean I was like super excited at the time and I was like you know what? I'll just open these packs now like it was it was about I think it was five rounds yeah five rounds best two out of three you know just regular whatever it was $20 entry but I'll go ahead and uh get into this real quick though um, if you haven't already please comment subscribe and like let me know how I'm doing uh, let me know what you guys are playing for Alter guys I've heard different things uh, running in this deck such as skill drain because protocol doesn't negate doesn't allow Alter Geist to be negated but the skill drain would still negate your opponents monsters I guess and then the other one was uh, dark Ren dark renewal uh, I'll go ahead and post that up there uh, but it was um, it's a trap that when your opponent like think normal normal summons or special summons you can send that card and spellcaster you control which all the altar guys are spellcasters to the graveyard and you special summon one from your deck I believe uh, so you like a good target would be like multi-figure but uh, enough of that um, I'm gonna go ahead and get into the deck profile um, so first up I played three marionetter uh, I really wanted to open up with her and like you know some good traps mostly her personal spoofing because once i normal summoned her on my first turn i would want to get one of the ultra guys cards one of the ultra guys traps depending on the situation usually first turn i get protocol uh straight from set like set onto the field or whatever as uh one of my main traps and then if i had spoofing i'll usually get rid of her and try and get multi faker into my hand Speaking of which, I then played uh, three Altergeist Multifaker. Now this one, when you activate a uh, trap card, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. Now, I believe it was Team Samurai X that said when you activated uh, personal spoofing, you can then uh, add Multifaker like if it's already face up, I'm, I'm not sure. But anyways, it's when you activate a trap card, if a, a trap card is already face up, uh, the judges told me, I was just, I asked for verification because I literally had just learned the deck. Um, so each time you activate a trap card, but if it's already face up, it doesn't work. Uh, then you can summon multi-faker and of course you get another altar guys from the deck. Um, so yeah, I played three of those as well. And then I also played three altar guys, uh, Milliseek. Um, I like this Ultra Guys uh, the most because of the fact of not only like being able to attack directly and not having to uh, like have to beat over things and then just send it to the graveyard. Um, I also like that when it goes to the graveyard, you get to add one Ultra Guys monster from your deck to your hand. And then uh, another good effect about I actually missed this. I forgot this uh, Marionette. Uh, I use it I think twice. And all the duels that I was playing where uh, you tribute it and then you pick another ultra guys and you special summon that like in its place or whatever and uh, yeah and then one of the MVPs for disruption uh, was ultra guys Siliquitus. Uh, I played two of these uh, three I felt maybe would be too much and one would not be enough um, usually my opponent really really wanted to get rid of this 
Uh, most of them are really annoyed because uh, I would usually summon this off a of multi-fake and then pop multi faker back into my hand. Um, and you just keep looping it and stuff like that. It is a really good card. It's like another disruption. Uh, you really gotta just pay attention to your opponent's plays and uh, there's, there's like sometimes with the back row that you don't want to send to the graveyard with Seek, so you would just use Siliquitus so they could never activate it because they kept setting it. Uh, I actually had, like I said before, I had played two, of, or I actually played one of these the day before and I felt like it wasn't enough so I bumped it up to two and my goodness like this was like, this kept me alive in those games. Uh, where it was almost starting to go into time. So Ultra Guys couldn't carry, I played two, of course. Uh, my favorite thing about this is that it's not once per turn. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's once per turn. I'm pretty sure it's not, because <laughs> I'm pretty sure somebody would have called me out. But the great thing about this is um, you can do personal spoofing, like during the battle phase or whatever, activate your trap or whatever, uh, get Kunkiri to your hand if you have an Ultra Geist that you have in your hand already, or maybe on the field or whatever, and then you would special summon this out, and then Siliquitus would actually, like, if it, like, it would negate the attack, because this is like, um, I forgot what that one card is, but you pretty much when your opponent attacks, you activate this special summon it to the field, negates the attack, and then you target one monster on the field. So I don't believe it's the monster that you negated or whatever. I could be wrong, but um, I usually picked another problem card. But anyways, you pick that card, and then its effects are negated until um, this card is removed from the field. So while this is face up on the field, and then protocol usually is protecting your ultra guys cards or whatever. But my favorite thing was. Uh, Actually, personal spoofing, getting this, uh, special summoning to negate the attack. And then they would try and attack another Ultra Guys, but it would be Siliquitus. And then you would use Siliquitus effect to pop this back into your hand. And then another monster would try and attack, and then you would just special summon this again. And I bumped it up to two because um, usually when one would go away, like either through like destruction or like some some other ones I always felt like I wanted another one and having two in hand wasn't in bad since they keep coming out and it's 2400 defense which was pretty cool uh, I actually stopped uh, deco tar deco talker um, with this because I already had protocol on the field I special summoned it to the field and then I need like it off of a different monster I negated deco talker and then so it had two links underneath or two monsters underneath its link zones and actually negated its like power boost and uh he tried negating but protocol was on the field and i think we ruled that it, he couldn't negate it all right so that was the uh, monster lineup um so it was all pure ultra guys i didn't play any hand traps the day before i just felt like they were just getting in the way uh this is like pretty much a pure build and <laughs> it ran spectacular uh, the next card I played was uh, one of. I played one pot of desires because usually I just only wanted to ever, like, I mean, it was really low because you really don't, like, play a lot of searching. Like, you kind of just set up with what you have, and that's usually enough. Um, then I played pot of duality because most of the plays in this deck I really like doing during my opponent's standby phase. So, like, I would just set up something, set up a couple back row, give them a false sense of security, they draw. Then stand by phase, I'd start activating like the traps I'd set on the field or whatever, and like special summoning stuff. So during my turn, I pretty much just like use this to grab uh, like a combo piece I needed or whatever, because you can't special summon the turn you activate this. So yeah, I used uh, three poly duality or duality or whatever, and that was it for the magic lineup. And then for the traps, I used three ultra guys protocol. Now I like this because it says that the activation effects. The activation and effects of Altergeist cards activated on your field cannot be negated. Uh, so unfortunately they can negate, I guess, um, Multifaker from the hand because they were saying that you have to reveal for cost, uh, even though I don't think the card says it, but I'm pretty sure, I don't know, th that's what the judge said. So I just played around like that, uh, I'm not really sure. Um, like I said, I just had learned this or whatever, but then it also has another effect that when a monster uh, activates its effect or whatever, you can send one face up Ultra Geist card you control to the graveyard and negate the activation. And if you do, destroy it. So I like that because, like, you would use Milliseek to send it to the graveyard. Um, and then when Milliseek is gone to the graveyard, you get another Ultra Geist to your hand. And then sometimes I would get Konkiri or uh, Multi Faker because if maybe I had another trap in my uh, face down that I want to activate and like do all my like plays or whatever. Um, next was Manifestation. 
Um, I really like this one. It's like a Call of the Haunted. I felt, I, at first I thought it might be a little too slow, but then um, the great thing about this is it has an effect that when it's in the graveyard, uh, you can actually banish it to put another Altergeist card uh, trap in your hand. And it actually can target, let me make sure. Yeah, you can actually target another manifestation to put back into your hand so you can keep like reborning your stuff. And then sometimes with, uh, with uh, what would I bring back would be like Seek, and then like I would use Siliquitus if I didn't have any other targets just to pop the trap back into my hand so I can use it again to send Seek to the graveyard, get the effect and protect uh, my life points by not taking damage and then I'd use Conquery to protect Siliquitus. Uh, so yeah. Um, next I used Altergeist uh, Emilutilif. Uh, I like this one because it protects, it's uh, like a special summon monster or whatever, and uh, it protects all your traps, uh, your altar guys. Let me see, it affects, uh, yeah, yeah, all altar guys traps you control. So I was like worried about like the, the traps that actually can destroy, because like most of the time I wasn't worried about magic cards, but I was worried about the traps or like effects that destroy the traps, so I pretty much ran this just to protect it, so they would have to target this first. Um, one of the best cards I really liked opening up with was personal spoofing. Just so you can use your Alter Guys cards, and then when you're done with their effects, like you really don't need them, like all of them in the field all the time, and you wouldn't want to switch out, get multi faker to your hand and stuff like that. Um, maybe I needed to get rid of some like some scales or whatever, because most of the time I would like just keep sending scales to the graveyard, you know what I mean? But then they go to the extra deck, whatever, just just to keep taking out resources and making like the pendulum decks work a little bit harder uh, to play. Um, and then I played three anti-spell fragrance just because, I mean, <laughs> it's just really good, especially against pendulum and I mained these. Uh, I was really happy with this. This actually slowed down um, True Draco and pendulum and yeah. So I really like this card a lot in the deck. And then another card I made was three infinite and permanence. Sorry if this is like a little bit cut off. I, I forgot, I'm zoomed in. But uh, three infinite and permanence. Um, this card came in clutch a lot of times. Uh, especially like when we were like have like a negation battle or like effect battle, like trying to go on and like they're trying to like negate stuff and I didn't have like, maybe I didn't have protocol or I don't know, there's just like a lot going on, and like this came in clutch a lot of times, so I definitely enjoyed running three of these. Um, I actually mained Red Reboot. I wanted to main, um, I believe it was Torrential, but then I was worried about True Draco and um, Masterpiece being immune to traps, so that's why I didn't use that. Uh, I did use Red Reboot because you actually can OTK your opponent with this deck. Uh, I don't think it you need like a little bit of setup or whatever like it'd be like maybe like the second turn but you can OTK and um, I pretty much use red reboot like almost every game even against they there was actually a mirror match there was only two of us playing ultra guys and um, they were trying to use their trap or whatever and I just red rebooted just to shut them down and then um, I pretty much sent everything to the graveyard um, or like bounce it back just so I didn't have to worry about it and I actually OTK'd the other Alter Guys deck that I played against and I believe I had like two of these set or whatever so I, like, I keep stopping their traps even during my turn and then I also played the Imperial Order um, the day before when I had practice I actually played against Paleozoic and got too excited and like didn't really think that somebody was gonna be playing Paleozoic, so like this kind of hurt me the day before. So I actually just waited until um, I felt like the appropriate time uh, to activate this because usually it would just shut down. And then um, if I was playing against Pendulum, of course I would activate Anti Spell and Imperial Order during their standby phase just to make sure that, you know what I mean, just block them out. And then for extra negates, I played two Solemn Strikes and a uh, Solemn Warning. Uh, these got, these things like pretty much helped out exactly when I needed them. Everything came out perfectly uh, when I needed it. There was only one instance uh, in the fifth round where I actually got evenly twice, and um, actually like it was really hard to try and come back from that. Um, 
Next up is the side deck. The side deck I kind of threw together. Um, I really didn't know what to do because, like I said, I had just barely learned the deck. Um, so I just threw some stuff together. I played two Altergeist Hextia because when you like use two and two, like this one will gain one and then uh, gain the attack of the one underneath and then this one will gain the attack of whatever Altergeist is next to it, the original attack or whatever. And I would use Manifestation or I would have another Altergeist, uh, I, I forget which one has like 1600 or whatever, but I would use that one next to it and then like, um, like I don't know how to explain it. Like you, you, you just see when you play the deck. Uh, I use Link Rebo. This actually won a match against True Draco in time. Uh, I had won the first round, and then he won the second round just because like he completely set up or whatever. I'm pretty sure. No, actually maybe it was only two rounds. I don't remember. But anyways, there was like a masterpiece that we had uh, magic and trap immunity, and we were already in time. And I believe he had the last go, or whatever. And I pretty much had this on the field, and um, like I set it up so that we, this was on the field, and um, move the seek the level one, and he pretty much used the effect to pop this, and then uh, I kept this on the field, the move the seek on the field, so that way I could like tribute for Link Rebo to make it zero, so we do no damage to me, and then uh, yeah, I was just gonna Silicotus it anyways or whatever. Like, I just had like a bunch on the field and it was, it was pretty good. Uh, the other one was top of this, like Trisbania. Uh, I wanted to try and use this um, against like decks that were kind of like mine. Like, and then I actually ended up using it a different way. Um, I actually linked away all my stuff because I felt like I was going to get evenly. Evenly matched because I had gotten uh, evenly matched in the mirror. So I actually brought this out. Uh, assuming that he would even leave me and then I set up a couple traps that uh, I just like you know I didn't play them all and sure enough he bounced this back to the extra deck and then I activated some traps just to do like like do my effects or whatever and then I actually got evenly and I just kept my continuous because like I expected it so that actually helped me out or whatever just so my I'm not all my ultra guys would get uh, blown out then I just threw Cerberus in um, Unicorn, Goblin, Phoenix, Proxy, Firewall, Borrowload. But uh, honestly, I didn't really use the extra deck much. I only felt comfortable using it when there was absolutely nothing left on the board and I make Hexias and attack free game. I did that a couple times uh, in the day. And then I played uh, Scarlet, Red Dragon, Archfiend. Um, I played two Cyphering Lord Omegas and a Black Rose Dragon. Now with these, I would use Kunkiri and then one of the hand traps that I had my side deck and like summon it. I thought about playing um, uh, the Magic Card, what's it called? Emergency Teleport for Ghost Ogres, but then I decided not to. And then Black Rose is uh, to use, I think, a level four and then one of your um, hand traps to go ahead and synchro. Um, my side deck. I had three Ash Blossoms, uh, three Ghost Ogres, I honestly did these, uh, oh, they're actually out of order, uh, let's see, three Ash and three Ghost Ogres. I actually didn't really use these and sometimes I just left them in the side deck because like the deck is so good if it's just pure and like sometimes I would just like draw into these like I need the top deck any any Ultra Guys card and I would get one of these and it just wouldn't be helpful because I just felt like it was a waste, like everything is like continuous in this deck. Um, this is something that I like debated a lot between Red Reboot and this, uh, Torrential Tribute, but of course I was worried about the True Draco, because uh, I didn't know how many people were going to be playing it, and then it's unaffected by traps, and then like this doesn't really do anything, so I figured Red Reboot would be better against other decks, and then I would just side. Um, and then I also played three Dimensional Barrier. Um, for like Pendulum and like any other decks like Invoked. Uh, Pendulum, I got to use it. And I actually didn't even use it against Pendulum Monster. It was like you're having like a back and forth battle. I actually stopped it to stop Tornado Dragon from destroying my uh, my back row. And I just like he activated it and then I just chained Dimensional Barrier and said XYZ. And then uh, this card, I used this too against Pendulum. Uh, and I think, and I 
I think the mirror match. I used it too. Like it was just like this. Like if I couldn't handle the feel, and I just like they kept taking out my stuff or they made something that was too big, I couldn't handle. I would side this in, and then I would just even leave the board. And um, yeah, but yeah, that's my deck profile. Um, once again, uh, yeah, I got first or whatever. It was. It was quite a bad I didn't I didn't think I was gonna do as well. I just wanted to play it for fun. Um, I actually had made the deck the day before and was just playing around with it just because I had the cards. And um, yeah, I'm gonna, the next video I'm gonna go ahead and open up uh, these boxes for you guys. And uh, if you haven't already, please comment, subscribe, and like. Let me know what you play in your Alter Geist decks. Uh, if you have any suggestions or anything like that, just let me know. And uh, if anything just have a good day and i uh, hope i see you guys or hope you guys see me next time and keep watching and uh yeah have a, have a good day